We are still working on this Rolls Royce Corniche. I pulled the dash out. Should I refinish it or should I just paint it? So I've been using this air sander hooked up to this vacuum, trying to keep it clean. And I didn't really show it before, but if you saw the car before, you saw how this would look. This was separating over here. I glued it down. And you can see that some of this was veneer was missing. It's been sanded off. You know, this is pretty badly damaged and it really should be re-veneered. But I decided to just sand it down. I started with an 80, then a 320, then a thousand and wet sanded it. And you see, I just wiped it off with alcohol. When you, when I wipe it off and it's wet, oh my gosh, it looks fantastic, right? But then when it dries, you know, see like that's how it looks wet, you know? So my plan is to maybe restain, relacquer it. I don't know if I'm gonna restain it, but I've never done this before, so I'm trying to learn these techniques, but it was just so badly, it was had spider web. My friend said that's called checking. He said that's what they call that, but all the lacquer was just cracked. It was just in terrible condition. And I took this down a few mils. I mean, there's a few areas where I screwed it up or maybe just the way it was, but where this is sanded, you know. And it really should have just a whole new veneer put on it. That's what it deserves, but, or maybe just a whole new piece. And I decided, I wonder if I should do it in wood or if I should maybe just color it. You know, the thought of painting it a solid color was a concept that I thought of. I know traditionally we look in these Rolls Royces and we're used to seeing wood, but like, look at this piece of wood. I mean, this is trash. This is a little center console piece. And like, I'm like, look, I just need to paint that a color, you know, like gloss black or, or white maybe or something. And I thought, okay, what if I painted it a color rather than trying to stain it and, and try to preserve this wood since there's so many spots like this that are just, you know, it, it's smooth as glass. If you were to feel it, it is smooth as glass. I wet sanded it. But like these areas where it's rubbed out, things like that, um, these issues here. So I don't know, I wanna paint the car red, the interior is cream. So what would be a color for this? Black, I could do piano black, I could do white, I could do red. What if the dash was red, just like the car? I think piano black is probably the more common thing to do or even matte black, but I'm thinking of doing this a color rather than trying to preserve the wood. I've also been underneath this thing trying to spray clean it. I've made a huge mess. My dude Hippie's gonna be pissed. I went through like four cans of brake clean and that jug of the purple power cleaner. And even while wearing this mask, this thing is just not chemical rated enough because I was getting lightheaded. I had to get out of here and get some air because brake clean is just a terrible, terrible smell. I mean, I feel like I made some headway under here, but I mean, it's just so, the brake clean has taken off some of the paint on this starter. But trying to get this crud off of here, I mean, you couldn't even see the drain plug. Um, yeah, I mean, you could see this, where this hydraulic thing here has been leaking the brake lines and whatnot for years. I mean, it's just been, these lines obviously are leaking. You know, this whole system is just leaking. And that has just coated the bottom of this motor with just crud everywhere. This entire exhaust needs to be replaced. Okay, that's needless to say. So it's just all wet under here from that, that, oil, that brake fluid. I don't even know if it's engine oil. I think it's, I mean, look at this weld. What the hell? So this whole exhaust needs to just come out and be replaced. That has to happen, okay? So I'm gonna order that, but this is just all wet. And what I'm thinking about doing is just coming under here with a pressure washer maybe. I just don't know how we're gonna get all the water out, you know, after, like how are we gonna clean this up? But there's just no other way to do this. This needs to be cleaned. And, um, and then we get, once it's clean, then we can find where the leaks are but it's just so dirty under here. We're gonna go through and replace any of these little suspension, little, little balls. 
they don't actually look that bad. You know, like that's a nice big thick cushion there. So, you know, this car only has 8,000 miles on it. But there is some rust right here that needs to be addressed. It's not super structural, but I don't know why that's there. So this bumper needs to come off. We need to patch that. But it's, it's other than being dirty, it's not really that bad. There's no damage. This, this bad repair on this muffler is not cool. We're gonna replace that whole thing. And we'll probably end up replacing all of these bushings and things for the steering if it needs it. Because I've never actually got to drive the car except for, you know, a few hundred feet where we pulled it out of the garage. So I'm not gonna attempt to drive this thing until, you know, that's all addressed. I opened up the door here. Scarface Cadillac, like, guy just came and looked at it actually. Fired right up, you know, guy wanted to see the car. So this car is on eBay. We filmed this car on the Pawn Star show last Friday. I don't know when that'll air, probably a month or two, a couple of months, it's usually a few months out. And, um, you know, Corey came out, looked at the car, made me a very respectable offer on it, but I would like to get a little bit more money. I've got it listed up on eBay for like, I think 30,000 no reserve, something like that. But uh, this car, I'm trying to decide exactly if I'm gonna restore it and keep it or not. I just looked at one that was just my dream spec. Red with the white interior, just like I like. Guy wants like $68,000 for the car. And I'm thinking, okay, like I got 15 in it now plus a little more in time and labor. If I put another 20 in it, right? I mean, painting it. This interior is actually pretty decent. It's actually not bad. We've cleaned it up quite a bit. I mean, it's not perfect, but if you look at some of these cars and the age of them, it's not bad. Now, I've been playing around with this dash and the electronics, and I bought a what's called a power probe. And the power probe, um, plugs into the battery here. I don't have it hooked up right this minute because I just, I was playing with it yesterday. And the power probe, what it does is it'll test for voltage, but what it'll also do is um, let you put power in, right? So this is like a, a hot tester. So you can te put it on something and it'll tell you whether or not it has voltage. And if it doesn't, you can force voltage into it like that. So what I did was I forced voltage into this light here and the dash lit up. So I backfed power backwards through this and all these lights came on. So I know that the light bulbs work, right? But I can't seem to figure out how to power them. It's gotta be this panel light. I've had multiple tilt people tell me, start with this panel light dimmer. It's probably bad. So I gotta figure out how to extract it out of here. So, Probably um, this is receiving power, but because it's failed or maybe unplugged or something under there, it's not letting the power back through. But the secondary problem I'm having is I'm not getting any of the park lights, right? The park lights being your running lights here, the, the red lights in the back, the, the white lights in the front. I've got the turn signals to work. So I got to figure out why I'm not getting power through this I don't know if power is going to this switch or not. I did manage to get one door light there. So the, obviously these other lights, either the, sw either the switch is bad here or this light is burned out. But when that door opened, that light in there came on. So that's an improvement. I also hyper clean this if I take a light. I order, I order this stuff called Deoxit. Let me try to put this light where I can kind of manage it a bit. Let's see here. This thing's magnetic, but there's nothing magnetic to stick to here. Here we go, the seat rail, there we go. Kinda, okay. So this is deoxit. Now, my, all musicians know what this is because this is how you clean correctly sliders and pops, or, you know, like uh, faders and knobs. So I cleaned this um, with the deoxit. I also bought these little scratch brushes, right? And what you do with this is you take you take your little bristle brush and then you can clean your contacts. You can clean a trace if you were so inclined. So it's it's basically like a little brush. You can adjust the amount of uh, bristle and you can clean the contacts. 
But quite frankly, it's just as easy. You know, the battery's off. Make sure the battery's off because this would cause a bunch of sparks. But you, you clean up your contacts. See? Clean your traces. This doesn't need to be cleaned. But anyway. So I've gone through and I'm trying to find some more of these these fuse deals here and uh they they carry them at the rolls royce place they're like 20 bucks a piece this one's broken as you can see and the way this works i didn't realize this at the time this is some spare fuse wire that's what this is whoops so what you do is this is so ghetto honestly you take some of this wire and depending on how many loops of wire you put in is how much resistance it is and you just wrap that around and you make yourself a, uh, a fuse. I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of ingenious, but it, it's it's not super regulated as far as, you know, burning it out. <laughs> but I can't seem to figure out which one of these, even using the diagram, it's just not seems to be working. So I'm gonna start with this next. I'm gonna try to extract this and do some kind of testing or bypassing on it. I don't really need it to be dim. I like my lights nice and bright. So I may end up just bypassing this all together if, if just looping through it and give straight power to these lights. I just want them to come on and light up. Then I want my uh, parking lights to work. I can't get this radio to work. I can't get any power to come out of that. It probably has an internal fuse, but here's the real question. Why in the heck are all the fuses and bulbs burned out? Is it just corrosion or age? I'm trying to clean up this little console here. I want to build a custom drink holder that's going to go here. That's got to happen. Got to have a drink. Got to have y'all drink. I got to extract this dash pad out so I can take it to the upholstery shop and have it reupholstered because this is not going to fly for me. And again, uh, you know, I think the wood here is quite preservable. But I'm thinking of just color changing that dash. I think that wood is in too bad a shape. And just doing it probably piano black, just lacquer black. You know, like that's black, that looks fine, right? So if that was all done in black, so rather than doing the wood, because I think that wood's too far gone. I mean, look at that wood over there. That wood over there looks like, it's, it's, it might be able to be brought back a little. But what if I just painted all this black? You know, it doesn't have to be wood. Black looks fine. Take this wood, sand it down, and paint it black and clear coat it lacquer black. It's going to show a lot of fingerprints, but picture the car red. The car's gloss red, and then this is black, just like this trim is black. Black, red, that's Video Bob, isn't it, baby? Black and red. So you got black piping, black inserts. We're going to have black carpet, black dash, red car, black and red. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. That other car I looked at, they had actually, it, of course it was an 85, and, it, and the, the newer the cars get, the less chrome they have until eventually the only chrome that's left on the car at all is the grill and the headlight surrounds. And then maybe a, a little bit piece of trim on it. But pretty much the, the more modern the Rolls Royce gets, the more body color they become. You know, the, the, the one, the year before this one, Instead of having this, this little cover here, see this is what they call a five mile an hour bumper. It's meant to move, right? It's on a big shock absorber. So when it bumps into something, boink. But you look at a car like this 63, there's no boink. You're gonna bend this <laughs> and whatever it hits. And that's a separate piece. And that's a separate piece. And that's a separate piece. And all of this stuff is separate. So when you got into a wreck with one of these cars, oof, the difference is, this car, this entire fender or wing, as you Brits would say, is removable. This is not. You wreck this, you notice there's no line here, right? This is, the car is one piece, right? The, the door is bolted on to the car, which is a solid car, right? This doesn't come off, right? This doesn't come off. This is one thing. It doesn't end anywhere. The car is one car. And that's the difference between a Rolls-Royce and, and other cars. It's a, it's a single 
unit of car. <laughs> and that's what gives it that rigidity. Now this thing's still on a frame, right? So they have a full ladder frame that this thing sits on top of. Whereas the new modern Rolls Royce is like my Phantom out there. That thing is like this, except one just giant unibody thing. And it's really well built. And that's why these things kind of have the ride that they do. There's just something about, you know, there's just no flex, there's no give. And when one of these is well sorted, it just, they make no noise <laughs> going down the road, just the tires. This one's gonna make noise. I wanna say thank you to all the people that have been helping me with this project. You've been giving me some great advice. You've been telling me all kinds of things to try. People have been sending me manuals. They've been trying to help me as best they can. And I really appreciate it. I'm gonna need all your help I can get. I'd like to know what we should do about this dash. You know, I have never worked with veneer or wood. I just knew that it was cracked. Maybe I ruined it worse, but I think it was already ruined. I mean, this whole thing was all separated into five or six layers. I used wood glue uh, to put it back together and clamp it so that it was at least one piece. Um, it is, it is going to be held in there, but I don't know if this is savable, you know, like you'd have to re-veneer this whole thing. And I'm perfectly fine with it just being piano black. And I know that might be sacrilege to some of the Rolls Royce purists out there, but I'm going to do the most American gauche thing ever. We're going to paint this Corniche glossy red. It's going to be bright apple red, Ferrari Corsa red. Red is that toolbox. I'm gonna probably, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna paint that piano black. I'm gonna paint it nice gloss black, wet sand it, you know, we're painting with lacquer, wet sand it, clear it, make it nice and black and shiny. I think it'll look fine in the car because that's already screwed. And then maybe, maybe later we'll find another dash to replace it with. But for now, that's what we're doing. Um, this is just gonna be a big, huge project. It's gonna cost a lot of money. And that's just, that's what it is to be into the hobby of Rolls Royce. It's not for poor people. But granted, the money I'm spending on this thing, not that bad. Depends on where your level is of doing projects. We're no longer into the couple of hundred bucks for, for an old car. I paid 15000 for the car. I'm probably going to put maybe double that into the car. And that's why I was considering buying that other one. The guy wanted like 65,000, whatever he wanted for the car. Because think about it, like, okay, by the time I'm done getting this thing sorted, but who's to say that that other car doesn't need stuff? That other car's a 1985 with like, I don't know, 65,000 miles on it, right? So it's not like it's perfect. It's gonna need stuff too. So my theory on this kind of thing, if you watch my videos about like my Phantom, for instance, where people go, oh, it's a money pit. Blah, 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 blah. It's a money pit, money pit. I hate that fucking word. When some underachieving, no ambition, fucking loser says money pit, I can tell you right now what kind of lifestyle they live. The most boring ever. They have no adventure, right? So my theory on these kind of cars is simply this, right? For instance, my Phantom, right? I, I bought my Phantom for a pretty good price, under hundred grand. It's a $500,000 car new, actually $700,000 car new. I just went and looked at one at Tobin Rolls Royce when I was up there buying my Maserati and they had a car in there. They wanted $730,000 for the car, right? And the, it's gonna massively depreciate. It's gonna, it's gonna depreciate like you wouldn't believe. So that to me is foolish. But buying that 2006 Phantom, I think I paid like, what, 60 grand for the car? And I've probably put another 20 or 30 in it over the last four years, whatever, I've owned it. And the car's like new. The car's almost 20 years old. And it's like new. Yeah, I've replaced the injectors. I've replaced the suspension. I've replaced the brakes. I've replaced, uh, you know, all kinds of different things on it. But those things now are new. So I now have a 2006 Rolls Royce with brand new spark plugs, brand new injectors, freshly redone transmission, fresh oil, new control arms, new tires, new wheels, new air suspension, right? New fuel pumps. And it works and does everything that it should. And it looks gorgeous. And I've got under a hundred grand in the car. Whereas if you were to go out and buy one of those a few years newer, you went and bought a 2009 or 10, right? 
you're still gonna have to do all that stuff again. So my theory on this old Corniche is that, yeah, let's say I throw money into it, but it'll have all new stuff in it. It'll be fresh paint. It'll have fresh rubber, fresh shocks, fresh tires, fresh, fresh, fresh. It'll be all like new. And I did it myself and I know exactly where everything is and how it works and it'll be well sorted and I'll know the car in and out and I'll be able to enjoy the thing and I'll get the same enjoyment for way less money and it'll have all new stuff. Whereas if I went and bought another car that was, you know, all original, who knows how much money I'd spend on it. And then you have to do it again anyway. Buying used is the smartest thing you can do. The Maserati that I picked up, my Levante, thing is five years old with 40,000 miles. And it's one of the best cars I own. It is absolutely one of the best cars I own. And um, people are like, oh, Maserati suck, they're money pits. How, in what way? I'm driving around a car with an engine made by Ferrari with a beautiful red and black leather with Zinnia silk inserts for the price of like, what, a, a Dodge or something? You know, it's not that much money, really. It just depends on where you are in life. If you can afford to drive one of those cars, Listen, if your budget will only afford you a used Corolla, this isn't for you. <laughs> Those are the people that go, money pit, money pit. Yeah, you know, I've said this before and people think I'm too critical about it. But I just can't imagine being a minimalist, right? This is me being judgmental here. I'm being my normal asshole self. But imagine you only get to live on earth once. And you really only get to enjoy your adult life for like 30, 40 years, right? Before, you know, you're either too young and you're working your ass off to try to get ahead or you're too old and you got to retire and you got to conserve your money. So there's this period of like 20, 30 years that you get to live it up. You get to travel, you get to go to concerts, you get to do cool stuff. And you want to spend that being a minimalist, doing the minimum, right? That's what you want your tombstone to say. He did the least. He was, he saved money. That's not what I want to do. I want to die broke, penniless, and wore out. <laughs> mm -hmm.